All right, so we're back. This is project two, version one. Uh, so one more thing, Ting, on this tickle bear, as I was reading through it, there's a pretty cool detail. Ooh, craftsmanship, check that out, please. Um, I didn't know this could be applicable to multiple different types of uh, toys, if you will. Let me, let me get that kid, hold up. All right, back, good. Um, so I found that out by one, realizing that this could apply to the system that you have, and then reading through it, the shame of it is I had to redefine that out because it seems like pretty, it's like a monodirectional thing, and nobody else in the class has the ability to kind of transform itself to different skins, if you will. So how do we show that? Part is highlighting here, but like this is a development on concept two. It's not really this was good, but this is what I went with. It's kind of like and both. Yes, fix that. Let's see if there's anything else I want to touch on. Explain these better because they don't make sense. Like what's that CV doing there? But you already know that. Is there a way you can kind of sketch out same perspective, but then do different animal styles or animal skins over it? Otherwise, like I can't appreciate it. And I think here we've broken your grid in a way that's not really fixable. Let me look at one more thing. Uh, another is in terms of consistency, you're changing radiuses on your boxes. You go from no radiuses to <laughs> quarter inch, three, three eighths, and then giant. So could you give me a version where just more consistent, like maybe that's circular, maybe that's more rounded instead of being so pillowy. Just some ideas. Um, also just, just in terms of color change, that's not gonna match every animal skin. So if you keep the core concept, but are able to change some of the colors around, just some thoughts. Uh, another bit of info. So I have Hefe as my GTA and so to help increase my ability to do good concepts before I get tired. He's going to take the grad students, I'm going to take the undergrads, at least in this iteration. All right, Miss Emily, concrete competition. It's a lot of gray. Okay. What's the purpose? Dallas, Dallas is cool. All right, see what you're doing. The biggest thing is like, it's a competition and competitions typically have something you have to compete against. There's some type of rules or limitations or constraints. What are those? And why is this building chosen? I see some type of, sense, some type of synthesis here. And this is me just being Ben Bush, this feels like it's out of perspective. So, good visual so far. I just, I don't know what you're going after, so I can't really evaluate it. All I can really say right now is like, the pictures look cool so far. So give me some more context so I can really appreciate. Talked about this during class. Let me see if there's anything else comes to mind. Looks real good. Still feel kind of questionable. I just want to see what it looks like without it. Like, does it need it? I don't know. Development. Told you all about a little bit of scale. Still working through imagery. This one's a tough one. Told you to try like at 50-50 with a statement. And whatever realization you have from this initial solution needs to flow like, all right, in order to better understand it, I had to build this out. All right, you say unique twice, but what about it is unique? I do like this. This is nice. This is kind of the direction I'm pushing you. So lives on a backpack. Backpack lives on it. Details, right? So I like when you go from macro to micro. At this point, the details make sense. Cool. Scale. Check. All right. Not bad, not bad. All 
Another coat rack. This says Mo Mobile, Alabama. Take it out. Way too small. Um, Future Studio is fine. The downside of Future Studio is what does that mean? I know that's what it's called, but consider who's reading it. If they're not familiar with, actually, I get, like no one's gonna be familiar with, with what Future Studio is. A lot of people know what Rural Studio is, maybe Urban Studio, but Future Studio, no way, too much of a stretch. So maybe name the coat rack, and then you kind of unpack it later. I mean, I get from context. Either we're dealing with architecture, skyscrapers, um, radio frequency towers or coat racks. These are kind of the only options that fit into the form factor. The form factor. Um, Randy. I mean, most people don't know what they want. That's fine. But this person needs to have an opinion on like stylistically what they like. Advice to everybody. If you're eating Cheerios, eat them before they get kind of soggy. They're not nearly as good. A little reminder on this. Make there's some type of consistency or why do we have what seems to be very different representation on what a coat rack could be? I like this. It's just, it's so weird. I'm like, all right, so why is this necessary? There could be a cool, cool story here. I don't necessarily like the six footer. And that comes straight because when you put a person next to it holding a garment, I'll know it's six foot. Maybe, eh, I don't want to mess. The problem is the sketch is so close. To the 3D model and 3D model is so close to your final rendering, it doesn't seem like there's any development. I mean, the only change I see is you go from having this part that goes under to a part that has no under. I feel like I had some comment about this. Like, what else are we gaining? Is this kind of a flat pack? Easy to build, easy to transport. I'd flip these. So easy to transport is this one. Easy to build is this one. Cost effective. It might be cost effective. I mean, it's, it's cost effective as like Ikea is. At some point, you're going to have to come back and talk about the style. Okay. These are good that you learn things, but it's not really special. I mean, every ID graduate knows how to use SolidWorks. Lots of ID graduates know how to make furniture, and those are good experiences. But why, one, why is this a good solution, user to design vocabulary? And two, why does it fit the expectations of Randy or someone who's fake like Randy? Okay. All right. FA's got Jew, Claude. Okay. I like this. I don't like this strip. Is there a reason for it? Mm, don't think so. So let's just get rid of it to full gray. All right, so just in visual hierarchy, my eyes go here first. And then I go at 551.1. Ooh, that's a good one. This is like, maybe, this is gonna grab attention and like people go, uh, maybe you ask the question, when's the last time you did a complex math problem in your head? Kind of hit home with that. I might kick that guy out. Like why use an abacus? Like we know it's old school technology, but it's obviously really good. It's still applicable. Maybe we fancy up this wording a little bit. Like cognitive retention would be a good one. Um, tactile learning, multi sensory. And I feel like this is being redundant of these previous two points.
Hmm. So things are technically right on this page, but I don't, I don't like it. I don't personally feel like it's successful. The hard part is articulating on that. Uh, it might be just this image. I'm not a huge fan of drop shadows. Maybe, geez, I don't know. This is asking a lot perhaps. Could I get another edition of this page? Or this could be like a how might we how may we make a a learning hub. I don't think we can see Abacus anymore because we've already accepted Abacus. How can we make a learning hub that increases retention, intuitive to use, and entertaining? All right, just a couple of things. One, there, there is some hierarchy. It's just kind of a weird way of doing it. Could you get rid of like glide, tap down, half cut off zipper? Like the names aren't really important. Um, some of this stuff is cut off, so either get rid of it or you could fuzzy it with a, a soft eraser. I do like how you're bringing attention to these concepts. Right, you can't just have one name. You got to have either names on all three of them or names on none of them. Tex, Texas, what a strange place. So, what are you thinking? Because I mean, you're you're taking some an old school technology and reinterpreting it. So, I wonder if it's worth any merit to start explaining like how an abacus works briefly, and then what are opportunities for improvement. Form exploration, I don't see really like form exploration on this one. A-frame, 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 A-frame. You're adding some, uh, exploration of touch points is a bit more accurate. You're dealing with, um, functionality, hierarchy of semantics. And this is one thing we can't really do with the English. We can't really stack with the English language. Sometimes you get into a bind when you have to do it, but it doesn't feel good. So how do we, one, we can take this out and expand our, our text range just a little bit. I wonder if we could crop that down a little, crop that down a little, move them to the right, and then give you some more horizontal width. Another thing that might help you in terms of text is, hmm, you can't change sizes like this. Headers are fine and bold because it's only one word, but when we come to read body or read a sentence, it's a lot more helpful to have uppercase and lowercase. You can typically read it faster. So I wonder if you change that, would you gain a smaller, not a digit, but smaller letter form? And so be able to put more words in there more fluidly. All right, it's fun, interactive learning tool. How does it work? I, I don't know. We were never taught at Apicus. This is nice. Let me read, Let me read through it. Could we, let's say this is 100% black, knock that down to 80. For some reason, I fix that. For some reason, when I get high contrast, black on white, my eye goes here first, but it's not really about that. It's that you're bringing attention to a part of your design. This is not sequence of use, this is assembly. Explosive view is okay in this one. I really get rid of exploded view just because this does a lot with exploded view communicates. Uh, and then like sequence of use, getting to actually use. So in place, ready to play, then step one of playing, step two of playing. Like, what does that look like? <laughs> what is that? Crossfire. Hmm. 
reeks of the er like uh, early '90s. Crossfire. Something like that. Fix that up. Um, I like the direction. It's not quite there yet, and I don't know why. All right, garden gift shop, cool. Blue sky exhibits, so this has to be internship. Maybe highlights a garden. Eh. One, maybe you tell about the garden first. Then you go to garden prop second. And then I would like a logo to help reinforce this. A little icon. Mood boards, too many images. Mint rustic. So I'm having a problem like I can't see the forest for the trees. It's just too much visual stimuli. So one option is start, you know, cut down and drop us drop the, the volume of imagery. Or two so worry about that size, because I mean consider how big this is. On my screen it is like three quarter inch by one inch. So it's not really a useful image because I can't see any detail on it. So maybe cut down, scale back up, and then if you want to bring attention to something, leave it in color. If you want it just for context, but it's not primary, black and white it. All right, we have two mood boards, elegant green and mint rustic. I like the inclusion of saying this is option one and option two. I don't know why we need two options for this. Let's see why. You have a fun way of spelling. Or have a funny way of reading. All right, here I'm lost. Merchandisers, like display items. What are we designing? Into your layout. If you're doing layout, I would focus on kind of programmatically the, the flow and use of space. Or this is primary, and maybe these interior shots are secondary. And then where we are, mint green, lush green. Another little suggestion is I just see a lot of brick and bricks probably are what you're going to have. Could you think like an Instagram filter, filter these to be a certain color tone and filter those to be a color tone. That way I can instantly tell the difference between the two. Um, if this is bigger, Think about a sequence of use when you get to view number one, this is view number one. What's good about that line of sight? View two, what'd you design to help that line of sight? I think that might add a little extra why you did what you did. Cause really this feels like an interior design portfolio spread in which I'm quite for it shows your range of design, but it might be good to reference what interior designers are doing to explain the functionality and usefulness of the inner spaces. Dialogue. This feels a little pixelated. And no wonder, like this white box is kind of funky. Dialogue, monologue, okay. What are we talking about? Designing two, two interactive apps, plural for a specific relationship could help with people with high functional autism to make friends easily. So I, I understand what you're saying, but the grammar is pretty challenging from an English side. I like the imagery. Let me see if it kind of continues. Yeah. The reason why I'm scrolling down is I want to figure out what type of look because this art style doesn't feel like this art style. And the entire portfolio 
project, at least the project, needs to feel cohesive. This is primary colors, dots, and 2D people. This has a little bit of like 2D shading. I don't believe either one's yours, but you need to kind of continue in one style. And since this one's first, this is what I expect. All right, too many words. I was inspecting. We talked about this with another project. It was a play core. Let's not cut off half of bodies. Kind of we use Illustrator to build that back in. Um, the autism spectrum is a wide, wide spectrum. So I started reading more Asperger's. Right? Asperger's is a form of the autism spectrum. I'd rather I'd get rid of these. I'd make this bigger and then be one statement of from this mind map, what direction are you going? We have multiple personas, we have two personas. Why do we need two personas? I don't know. So, same thing. If you keep in this graphic style, when you change over to a person, it feels natural, but now we've gone from cartoon to lifelike, so it doesn't really feel like it is it is as much your portfolio. Like what are the takeaways? I'm more like, these should be big and bold. But I think we already kind of knew that. I mean, that's already been stated from up here when you talk about developing relationships make friends easy, high functioning autistics. So are you really telling me anything else that I need to know? Must, should, maybe this is could, and that is won't. Ideate. So one thing is like, why does it take the form of an app? Uh, to be very, very gentle with how you're defining autism, give me a concrete direction. My biggest reason is like, why go an app with it? Sounds like you, are you really gonna make friends through an app? Maybe, but I need that to be defined for me. All right, hate the front page. What I'd like you to do, pull the image down a little bit so it rides on the bottom so you're not cutting anything off. Maybe go full bleed with the blue outside. And then Solace needs to be big and more primary. Solace is big, five week project. And then maybe we save this for later. You can say like something really fast, like word driven form study. Finding inspiration, problem. Yeah. So go back and forth on this. I feel like your font is just a, a touch big, a touch bit big so can we wrangle that down some I like this because this talks about your understanding yours is your design process like just having one word isn't enough Not that I want more words, but if we move the word, the idea of being friendly down here, um, it's like we gotta unpack the project brief. We are developing a, a time piece. It doesn't have to be a clock, but something that communicates time, but more importantly communicates uh, a visualization of friendly. And to understand friendly, you had to use synonyms like outgoing, optimistic. Mood board, all right, for me the important part, you have a mood board, now what do you do with it? How do you make steps from here to here? So maybe what are your main takeaways? Could be you wanna have gentle, continuous lines, um, a mixture of pastel colors with wood tones, 
simple geometric shapes that have a little liveliness to them. Something, right? So I want some direction coming out of your mood board. This is kind of this is a, a tough shift to go from 2D to 3D. What do you do with ideation? Like it just doesn't. I don't think it's as successful sitting in the front middle. So maybe we'll top middle. How about top left or top right? This doesn't feel like it really is that important because typically I can understand what's going on the page without it. Like if you took it away, would I still know what's happening? Yeah. So left or right, and then maybe knock it back to 70% opacity instead of 100% opacity. I want to have a little bit of information and you can do it in color, like size and color to help emphasize what's more successful. What if you do like a slant of a page? And so you have sketching over here and then modeling over here. I just don't know your process. That's all. It's like I'm missing too many steps. And you are going to show a final model. Girl, get, get away from all this text. Nobody's going to read this text. And so by doing it, it's like you have a, uh, you're using your crutch and everyone can see the crutch. So you have this guy. Why did you go further and make a digital clock? And if you do a digital clock, then I want to see some more stuff, right? The further you go, the more time you spend. I want it to be more articulate. So an exploded view, you know what? I don't know the scale either. So there's, there's some pretty things, pretty big things missing there. Rod, a little bit more description on what this is. I can't tell what it is, so I have to keep on reading. I think that's a good thing. Could we try, instead of this text being left aligned, do center aligned? And then like center your text over your objects, right? Versatility is a bit right aligned that it should be center aligned. All right, so in this case, we jump really fast to the final result. I don't know if that word's right though. Versatility? Versatility is more like I have a, a Leatherman knife and I can use it for multiple things. Yours is more convenient, right? It's easily transportable. It is collapsible. And then kind of gets into storage. So I just question that. And like, I don't know what you mean by last mile. Like if I took your last mile and you made a, a scooter, what would be the difference? So I don't either explain what you mean by mass mile, by last mile, and there's some, some some criteria that need to be met, or just skip last mile altogether. If this is your flashiness project, that's all right. I want some more moody renders. If this is your flashiness project. If it's not, I, just need, I need content to help build me, like why did I get to this part? <laughs> How do you get from a brief to a rendering really fast? Uh, scale, you talk about it being useful for storage, so you know, store something. Right, at least like an outline of uh, an umbrella in the wings. How do you show use? How do you show scale with this? Dolly mode. You know there's a reason for dolly mode. I don't. So this needs to be unpacked. This could actually be really clever, but because I just see it, one image of it, it seems like maybe you need to unpack. It's not just a scooter you need. It is versatile transportation of goods that are very heavy. So, not bad, just gonna be fleshed out. And it needs to fit um, a criteria for flashy because it doesn't have content and it doesn't have the aha. It's me, aha. There's a rapper named Aha Gazelle. He's all right. Five weeks. Nobody cares about five weeks. Knock that dude down. Really should be up there, right? If this is auto and then you say form and aesthetic exploration, that makes sense, but 
<laughs> Five weeks don't matter. All right. Form the final three meaning. Make so what do you, which makes sense. What do you mean by powerful? This is the catch. If you show me sketches up here, I don't want to see them again because I think in that case it's redundant. Do I see same sketches? Yes and no. One thing you could do, it's, it's a bit dishonest, but you see how this is pink and this one's red. Just go in and just change some of the color palettes. That way instantly I don't recognize these things being the same because I went from seeing orange to saying arms, I'm like, he's just reading sketching. He really didn't do that much work. Too much text or bold? I would say actually both. Scale this up some. So this, in my opinion, this should be the focus. I do like how you're articulating on some of your decisions and some of your changes. I do like how it's Linear, there's a word for this when things happen over time, but I can't pull it up right now. Can we drop these down and like and make them more dark gray? And if we are if we're matching the word of powerful, how does this tie back in? I mean, like, I think I was going to say it like you use synonyms to develop like this similar language, and so maybe that needs to be extended to right here. This is stupid. Photoshop that thing. To me, this look, needs to look like one image. So maybe these flip flop. It would help if they were the same scale as, as well. Um, if they flip flop and you have a consistent background, it looks like it's one image. With the dot, 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 it might feel right. But right now, it's just like, this is what I see first. I see the gap. Um, and then we need some text, and small text elements, but I'm kind of driving it home. I don't know scale this entire thing. So how to communicate scale, not a bad rendering. It's just, would it look better in an actual environment or a more fitting environment instead of like a gradient? Probably. I think I saw this guy over the summer. I see a few craftsman sip stuff. That needs a little bit of craft. That's probably right, but it feels like that is wrong. Um, all right, does that make him a Jarvis? I sure hope so. Because if this is your portfolio, oh, come on. You see this, this purpley pink? This all needs to be white. I don't mind you doing that, but these need to be pure white. Uh, let's do big omega symbol here and omega time because look if you say the word time and look at it unless a metronome it's a clock so clock is being redundant uh omega time and then maybe center line everything three project and get rid of design by kimmy jarvis because your portfolio is going to have that at the beginning inspiration i'm going to kill the persona off because there's not enough substance on this persona to really help me buy into it inspiration maybe call it translation we were tasked with developing a timepiece to match the word bold, but I felt I needed to better understand the synonyms, so I developed confidence, stability, risk taking. These all need to kind of have like a border that is a square. So expand, make square. So this text becomes horizontal right here get me into these words. I just want to look through this real fast. All right, using the Omega symbol too much, calm down. In context photos, well, we can't do in context photos yet because we haven't really solved the problem, can we? I don't think that's very smart. Well, man, you're dumb. I guess that's fair. All right, so how do you take these ideas of confidence, stability, and taking risks and translate them into your sketches. Like, how do you embody them? This is really hard to do. And actually, I would call this detail refinement. So it's like you're using 
too much on one page. I feel like you need to have a sketch page. And then maybe the next page is models, which what's the difference in these? This is a good one. That's a bad one. This probably communicates more information. Hopefully it's a good resolution so you could blow it up. So maybe that to the left, some type of a break or some type of vertical division. That way you can go from on the left, I'm doing models. On the right, I'm exploring what the hands, what the time telling uh, details might look like. File design, give me big images. We've, all, we've seen that already. I need to be convinced why it's a good final design, especially you introduce it here. So give me another image that I haven't seen yet and explain why it's a good solution. I'm not going to read any of this. So it's between these two. Final image, why is it good? Give me images I haven't seen before. Maybe in context, but you basically got one image because small, 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 small. Every single time I have to find it. I don't want to have to find it. It should be primary is what we're talking about. All right, it's a beginning image that tells me I don't know anything, so I have to keep on reading. And I feel like we need a division between this. So Ori, I would make it bigger. I might move it up to the top because you have more real estate. So Ori here, uh, a single stroke here, and then electric last mile solution for commuters. I want to make that fit on one line. Maybe that's possible if you move it up and maybe scale down or go down with one font point. I wonder, instead of saying design opportunities, you go, in order for this design to be successful, it must dot, 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 or it must be dot, dot, dot. Portable, intuitive, and storage, and those concepts need to come down into this, which concepts embody these ideas. Why did you go into prototyping? So if you're talking about honesty, you need a reason for it to go, you know, I was on this track and then... I realize I, I didn't know something. Call outs, cool. But don't show me zoomed in product imagery until I get a, a kind of big overall feel for what it does. So go macro first before you go micro. I do like one, two, three, four, five, six. But how could we, this feels like there's wasted space on the top and the bottom. Could we make it a bit taller? Could we make the borders thinner just to increase details that I'm seeing? And like this is kind of like a course, right? These were your goals. So how do you explain to your reader who's never really seen this before how these how it's intuitive, how it packs down, how it saves space? Like, aren't these the same thing though? Portability has a little bit of lightness to it. Flex or folding has nothing to do with lightness. Folding and saving space to me are the same thing. So I think you're being redundant. Yeah, scale would be nice too. Um, but for me, the biggest thing you're, you're missing is, well, multiple things you're missing. <sighs> Excuse me. Now I lost my thought. Come on, bring it back. Yep, go back and listen to my notes. I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Joy toast. Let me see if I'm right about this. June toaster oven. If you haven't seen it, it's pretty cool. I don't think I'll be the only one who brings this up. Good rendering. I might bold fix internal components and then redefined user interface. That could get me closer. 
in this image you look like so much like Hayao Miyazaki. Just saying, for this, it, this works for our class, but it doesn't work anymore. So why do we start with the persona? What are her unique needs? I do like the idea of an international college student is a good one. So what are the things she needs? And then you can develop past that, finding a target market. But really, like these are her needs. So just go ahead and just like do all international college student who has these this type of lifestyle and this type of requirements. I don't know how I feel about it. It's not bad. I don't love it. I would like a second opinion, but since I'm the only one awake looking at this, I don't know. Part of me says, get rid of this text. Part of it really likes it because I, I had the idea that you're bringing previous information into the sketch, so I'm, we'll say leave it. Secondly, the ones that are bigger, like I just want to know inf more information about them. And I don't know if a call out is gonna be most appropriate, but I would say if you can make it bigger and more like three line weight to bring prominence to it, that could help some. I do like further concept development, of course. I would categorize it into like sections like what are you solving? Temperature gauge, cleaning, component integration, I don't know. That way I know what you're developing further. Same thing about the sketching. It is good sketches, but the ones that need to pop aren't popping yet. Good. I like this a lot. I think it's very good. Seems of use. The only thing I wish were these were just a bigger size so I could get like, I want to zoom in and look in here. So my suggestion is when we jump to online, these can be full pages. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so this is really good. Most importantly, this is fun because er earlier you didn't tell me that's most importantly. You don't say portable as one of your main um, topics. So, you know, make sure like I'm just, it's a kind of basic storyline stuff. You can tell me it's a problem, solve the problem. If you solve a problem that didn't exist earlier, it's like, okay. That's fun to end on. I'm having a problem with this page because I see the rendering and it's actually, these are okay renders. I would say either or. Have these with a the color because it just feels like it's a dark room. And then bold the things I can actually see. Production function. <sighs> like, like what? I don't know. You added a wooden handle and it's attachable door. Well, that price just went up then. Now I have to source that because it's not metal. And this is a complicated hinge. So I don't, I think either or. You stick with this and you reformat this to fit a horizontal page. The sketches are beautiful. Or you go into more detail and I have bigger flashier renders in addition to the detail renders. Okay, good project. Just some things. Oh, Steven. How about now? Ah, uh, yes. So why did you cut the word enjoy in half? I know, I see ecochrome. What if you just do like a a darker red or a dark gray as your background and maybe this border or this line underneath needs to be the same width or the length as the E. Kind of making more vertical lines make sense. 
All right, for for my reading pleasure, would you please consider exporting these as individual images? And I know it's it's these aren't sixteen by nine. This is a larger ratio, and you're free to do that. But consider my screen. Right now, this is taking up like a third of the screen. So we can't export like this because you. We can't export it this like really super wide because I can't see the details and like, I really can't give you the feedback that I want to because I can't read your text and honestly I wouldn't read your text anyways. Let's not do this color change on everything. It's good for the beginning because it's kind of logo-ish. But the reason why you have text in here is to give context and so for me it's a bit distracting. This is a weird way of doing it. CEPM. Let's not build an acronym that doesn't need to be there. Could we do white balance? They all seem dirty. It doesn't have to be pure white, but it needs to look clean. Maybe desaturate it so it's black and white. That could help. I don't know what any of this is. Is it a form and surface? I guess it's form, but it's also like perception, interaction, intuitive building, concept development, something like that. I might flip these the piece inform these information pieces around. Give me the whole thing first and then give me the details second. We might not need so many images. I might say three. Like don't show me images of things twice. And it's so much real estate. I need that to be like zoomed in. So maybe either take your take your own image where the clock is front and center. Okay, that's all I got for this one. All right, you and Savannah, kind of the same issue to work through. All right, so let me just look at your kind of visual explanation. Okay, I like the style. Um, will it gel with your other projects? I'm not really sure it feels kind of light and cartoony and cheerful. So make sure the style you're using is applicable, but it's consistent all the way through. I think that's good, but you got to do it with the other projects. That's the way it feels like one portfolio. You can fluctuate in style, but it can't feel like two different people did your portfolio. Some of these borders, I see some gray here, some gray here, some gray there. This is actually, I, I get this. I wonder, if you can show this to somebody else outside of uh, like a graphic design professor who doesn't have any context, if you showed them this, would they understand what it's for? What do you do? I'm not going to read it. This is where you're kind of winning or losing. So double check that against somebody. I think it's a good start. Challenges. Bold, I think I said read. So Clash and Church, I think should be bolded. Something like all materials. Like what are you sending? You're sending a, a list of plans or you're sending a, a jig. What are you really sending? It's like you're sending the plans and then they have, they have to put them together. So it's not so much, you're not designing a thing. You're designing a plan so someone can effectively make a thing. Cool sketches, well, sketches. Prototype, I like it just Get rid of that dot. So this is one, two, three, four. I like how you're articulating what's happening. I wonder. Because the way this lands, I want to read here. Can we fix that connected? Could you try iteration for me where this comes down, comes back, starts here? That way, every time it contacts above a word, so this one instead of go here, it comes down, wiggles, comes back, come down, wiggles, comes back. I 
Yeah, but this is still prototype. It's in a shop. This thing's not supposed to be used in a shop. So I wish I could give you like a, a magic solution on where do you put this or how do you show this. And I think Savannah was right. You need to show this as, yes, making the bench was important, but even more important than making the bench was making the direction so someone who doesn't make furniture or have a wood shop all the time can easily do it. So part of this is explaining why the cuts are made where they are to use local resources and tools easily. And then like, I know something complicated is going up in here. Convince me it's not complicated. I want to drop outdoor enthusiasts and just like have this be big off grid power because if you're off the grid, chances are you're outdoor. So mood board, I'm cool with. Could you connect that little flow line? It's so close to matching up and I want it to match up. So what, I'm looking at this stuff. This is where you're talking about the outdoor enthusiast. Once, one sentence, why I'm looking at BioLite stove, which are awesome. These are cool. Why am I looking at it? Are you making a wearable or are you making a, we'll call it peripheral, I don't know. All right, so maybe you're buying the technology from the bio lamp. I don't think we have to explain it this, wait, light? This is light or heat? Or both. I don't get enough information from this for, to be useful. So what technology are you using? I think it's helpful to show like the product you're using, referencing the technology of the BioLite, I did this with it. And you can explain it briefly, which translates or transforms heat energy into electricity. All right. The problem I'm having is like, I don't know what it's for. Charging cell phone devices. Why a helmet? So sequence of use can be good at the end. Um, my immediate thought, like, yes, the head does give a lot of heat off, and that's valid, but it doesn't have the most capabilities of storing. I mean, you'd have to store a battery on your head or run a wire. My next was like, yo, why don't I just put it like under the armpits into a jacket? That's already kind of wired to put something in a pocket. So if you can come up with a good comeback, why a helmet's a much better place than a jacket, which is closer to the heart, closer to the heat source, and with pockets, you can explain me that, then you can continue. How are we doing? I feel like I'm doing good on time. Almost an hour here. Cool, I've seen this one before. This is one you sent to me before the semester started. Let's get rid of the word duration and do six week long self-driven project under that. And like you see your spacing here, tick, 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 bring the word urban down, maybe give me four, uh, two millimeters. I want the spacing here a bit more reconciled. We'll change the neighbors and relate to the project. Cool. I don't know what you change, change it to. What's the importance of that logo? I don't know. Cool, you know this guy's from like um, New Orleans? Also, I'm giving a presentation at Savannah. It's a really cool bike. Why am I looking at it? Facade prominence. It might be good to give me a, a mood board. I feel like I need to call BS, let me, call, let me check real fast.
then people are crazy. Although this isn't something. Um, do minorities buy this vehicle? Stop. Only because like that word is really still pretty raw with people. I I know this is not part of your what you're doing. It's just sometimes I have questions and I gotta figure them out. All right, so it was Matthew Chambers, and who did I see? Maybe I saw them make the the head designer. Louisiana, cool. All right, back to work. So I might mix. I don't really care. It's nice that he founded it, but like, is he important to the manifestation of the facade? Probably not. So, yes, give me bikes, but also give me like other type of visual stimulus that helps me understand what Confederate Motors is. And then I really like doing this by saying, you know, we're showing this image because they believe in process, they're transparent, they're built to last, they're mobile art pieces. Good. I was going to say, these sketches suck, but you already gave me to it, so. Good. My biggest critique here is like zoom in. I mean, I'm only using a third of the image to really see what's going on. Now, context is important. And I do like prototyping. What did you learn from the prototypes? Cool, cool. So I don't know why street edge is important, but maybe you do. But you want to have usable public space. I don't think this works really well for final design, only because I haven't seen it in that way yet. So I've seen three quarter view, uh, angle view, and then you throw me on a straight on. This to me doesn't make sense. I want to see this first and then explain kind of diagrammatically why it's a better solution. And then you can come back. I don't know what view this is. Maybe you can do this diagrammatically instead of through a model because I feel like the models are kind of done there. Final design. Yeah, but I mean, scale up. I need to know why it's a good solution, and right now I don't know. These things should also tie back to this visual brand language that you're developing. So, you know, if you kind of say this, who is Confederate Mot Motorcycles is um, brand wise, philosophically, why does the solution fit them? Oh, burr. Made that bigger. Like that big. I want it, the B over here and the uh to border it. And just take that out, right? If you say this is a month internship, I'm like, well, when did you learn? If I don't know it's a month, then I can just evaluate the project. Do we need time span? Summer 19. There we go. That's your time span. Palette design. All right. So why are we start with the palette? All right. Are you? Just, is this packaging design? No, it's neither. So explain to me what their need is, and then when you get into palette design, it makes sense. What are your constraints? What are your opportunities? How are you adventuring through your opportunities and sketches? We really can't do this with like, there's like three font sizes. I think this is a situation where you can change to another font. So this can be your text font, but this one's a bit more loose or handwritten. Your hands right, not bad. No. 
This is a placeholder, right? What is this here for? I'm gonna joke on you for this. Why would I have packages in the middle of Sierra Nevada? So I just need like basic structure. Why, what's the challenge? Then how are you solving the challenge? Cause you're just kind of throwing it out there. We've also got to standardize some of your text. Maybe that's one that's better. Just me and you talk it out than me. Just pontificate your direction. All right, cool. I remember this from the previous class. So keep in mind this has to fit your other portfolio spreads. It needs to feel like one portfolio. Big project, right? So I do appreciate this. Kind of tell me where we're going before we go there. Um, let's take this goal and put it on this page because really the goal is articulated through these six steps. Text-wise, pick one size. <laughs> Why not say like sub-brand solution? Just either get rid of the problem and this is talking about sub-brand solution or the problem. There's no pre-existing Alienware All right, so where's your area of opportunity? Here? So what? This is my biggest question here is like, all right, you're doing parent brand research. What do you understand about them? Okay, so we're not designing yet. You're like, this is understanding. So I would say understanding the brand, understanding the brand, developing upon information synthesis, I'll tell you more when you throw some more research in here. And yeah, you might need a Are you making a service? Yes. I think this needs to be prominent because like if this is how you are developing the sub-brand. You're making a logo for a service, you're making packaging for your service. This needs to be redone so it fits. Uh, lighten the border on these. That doesn't quite fit. How can we make that joker fit? I don't know. POP display, cool. Don't really love drop shadows so much. Another opportunity to go ahead and just kind of go back and like, there's not that the sketches are bad. It's just you need to Photoshop the gray. It needs to be a clean image and they both feel dirty because of the way that they are scanned in and let's see problem is like I think this should say exhibit design because that's not enough to really convince me I know it's part of the steps but it's what I'm seeing on the page so, um, exhibit design what are some basic criteria because man exhibit design is freaking tough you're gonna fix it to drop hundreds of thousands maybe millions of dollars on a building it's not just it's not like a package so like it might be worth reinterpreting or re uh, communicating that you've got to fit this type of thing or maybe you leave it out like it's like when you're throwing out something with some substance let's do some name views a b c d don't really love this i'd rather see people inside of it a b c d e these need to be labeled a b c d e This is when I'm like, I'm honestly, I'm not really sure what to do with it. Most because you can do an entire project on exhibit design. 
It's more like how did you embed the brand philosophy into this? How is it an extension? How many more I, I'm getting? All right, I should be able to make it. Oh, kitty cats, great. There's good and bad things happen on this page. Bad is, I think Mad Mix needs to be bigger and to be more apparent. Like you did work for a company that people know about. Not every university because I have that. Like you have real industry experience in a way. So that's why I want that logo to be apparent. On top of that, I don't want to show Smuckers because it's confusing. You can say this, kind of like low-key we work for Smuckers. We talk about wet cat food. I want you to elaborate that in a second. So I guess the biggest change, Malmix, come over here, make it big, more apparent. And then I need to know you're doing wet cat food and packaging. I'm just looking at this. I don't mind this abstracted P shape. It's just the underlining that really throws me. One, can we make it more subtle? And two, is there reasoning behind it? Because like, why does it land on the second letter? I don't know. This one doesn't land on the second letter. That one does. That one doesn't. Does. Doesn't. So I just want consistency. I'm just a little perplexed. Okay, what are some of the things? They're trying to be more health conscious. I want to say they're worried about this one. They dislike the smell and don't want to touch food. Wasteful. Is that being not health conscious? I'm thinking. Can I get you to try something for me? Hit enter at two, make this more even when they line up. Move this up a little bit, move that up a little bit. And then I want like the statement. Our research led us, nah, that sounds stupid and academic. We knew we needed to make a wet cat food package that was touch free, health conscious, and affordable. I want that part to, to stand out more because really it's the direction that guides the rest of the process. So I might go bigger with this, change it to more of an orangey yellow so it pops or just feels different. Is I question is how to make it better one is I want some more of that right that's almost legible it could be a touch larger you can't read that which is fine at least I know you're thinking but why are these good solutions I mean they fit this criteria but how why what are you thinking and then development on each I think we got to do this a different way Mostly it feels like this ellipsis on top and it's kind of covering these things. Could the ellipse be behind and these be whited out? Could the ellipse be more white? Yo, get rid of that jank finger. That is gross. Also, this page really doesn't do justice for your, your real estate. Fix that up, please. And like right now, this is for development. I, I don't know what they do. I just know that somebody touches it with a creepy finger. 
Could we leave this out? I think it's the same thing in everybody in class. Anytime y'all did the actual food, it looks disgusting. I'd, if these were like, I don't know if it'd work in this situation. If these were line drawings, it would take some of the grossness away. What did you learn from the mock-ups? Maybe this is the only page you need. Features. Right now I go two pages. Like you're trying to do too much, you're cutting off hands. Another good way to do hands in this situation is go in and do Illustrator, outline, hand and figure so I get context, but it's like a ghosted hand that fades off instead of it cuts off. So it gestures at you know, interaction and scale without being so literal. So this needs to be redone. It's good information, just not attractive. File design, you need a cat. Like, how are they sold? Like, are these kind of stack things? They're kind of sold like tuna fish? Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Why is it a good design? All right, EJ, Hefez, get you, Miss Falkenberg. Hmm. I'm afraid your headings are like just, it's too big, it's taking up too much real estate. It's fine with their, you're kicking off a project to talk about like intro, this is kind of like a logo, so to speak. But when I get down here, the typography's bad. So scale down, put it at the top left. It's really for context. Typically when I'm reading something at the beginning of a project, it's either a problem statement or a project brief. So it's taking up too much space or something that's redundant. Energetic. Show me. Don't tell me. <sighs> Finish this. No. Right now I say redo sketches. And then like how are you integrating your mood board and how are you integrate your synonyms into these? Which ones are successful? What did you learn through your models? Not just that we told you to do models. Right now, it's still the background's too distracting. Same thing with this. I mean, it would be just better. Because am I gaining anything from the context? No. So it's like, <laughs> that looks like a, looks like a booty in this situation. How do we avoid that? Um... Keep the image. Build in a drop shadow. I don't know what this last one is. So I don't know. What did you learn from the making of it? We just got to remake shadows. If you'll ask me during class, I'll show you how to make really fast, convincing shadows for objects. All right, I, just want to, I know you have a comment. Underwood, look at this one instead of the Smuckers project. Okay, now, keep in mind, where is this at right now? It's after. So luckily I saw it, but you need to be telling me, Bush, look at this one. Don't look at this one. No, other way around. Don't look at me, look at my other posting. Got it. All right, this topography is hot mess. So many different sizes, so many color, color tones. Um, it is centered on the line, and I think that's good. I need for a good image of my parents' house. It doesn't have to be their house necessarily. It just has to be a house, or if you want to keep it light, give me a line drawing of maybe, you got to do an odd number, three or five coat racks, just to give me context of it, but not too much information. Duration. Problem. Well, I don't even know. Like, it goes back to furniture. Is there a problem? If I have a closet, I don't need a coat rack. So, why do we need a coat rack? To Sarah Wilkinson's. 
it can serve as a visual sign of hospitality. It can serve as a functional art piece. It's not just a thing that hangs close. I would say like it hangs close as a secondary function because it's typically not holding them. At least not on, not in Alabama. Is this information important? Right? That's the real issue. Hosting. So when they're hosting a party, why have a coat rack? If you can explain me that, it makes a lot more sense. Yes, you have concrete information on different types of coat racks, but do I care? No, not in this situation. If it was something really business-like, yeah, give me like a marketing analysis, but here it doesn't feel as necessary. Sketches, uh-huh. Models, sure. And then your job is explaining why it's good, why it fits. So if you can tell me who you're designing it for and really get me to understand that what are their issues, I'm going to appreciate the way you solve it a lot better instead of just kind of going, you know what, we need a hand close. Yes. I know a lot of things about the market. Does that really apply? It's, it's a sculpture piece. Right? Set this up first. Make it very human. Make it relatable. And then when you start solving it, it'll make more sense. I almost like I want a picture of... Once again, you might have to just call somebody else your family that's not your family. But I want to see it at a party. I want to see it in use because that's what it feels like it was made for. All right. Yes. Um, come on, brain. Hefe has you. You, Lynn. Palmetto. Could you align this so a lamp for relaxing, scale down the size just maybe two point sizes? I wanted to fit under the word palmetto and maybe bold the word palmetto. Great images, great form. I like this a lot. Our text, our um, typography is pretty bad. Palmetti over, get rid of that. Like it doesn't need I can tell that you're thinking through what it is and you're developing. I think that's good. Like in your development process. I don't need to read it, but you can do those if you want to. But direction palmetto over. What I want is this information to line up on the left. This has good original intent it has interesting curvature but doesn't block enough of the light bulb this one too much material too much labor cost i like what you're doing it's just the typography is not developable enough yet and i wonder if you can keep the same spacing so let's go with this one if everything is spaced this much that means that line and that line have equal spacing and might look more composed. Go ahead and throw this image far right. So go ahead and bleed that off the edge. No, we can't do this. And really this, can you do a white background with the dark red font? Um, it would help if I could see a border of like how big is the, the laser cutter? Are you using it efficiently? Version one, version two, version three, version four. Maybe yeah, it's like version one fabrication cost. Give me a cost. Version two fabrication cost. That way I can see you improving it and driving down cost um, as you're designing because part of what we do is getting material cost down. Material cost is $3, cool. I do like this image a lot. The downside is like it's on this, you have this high contrast, red's a bit hard to read. I might need to throw this at other people, but if I'm reading a sentence, lowercase is so much easier to read than uppercase. So 
I wonder if you would make this uppercase and lowercase, would it read easier? Uh, another thing about this is, uh, can we use a white background for this? Just the contrast too much. Let's not do finished product here because these are the finished products. Actually, let's do one, two curses. Number three is going to be tough. One, two, big three, four, five, and then have two images over here. Too many images. I'd rather see two pages than all this. I know you already have it in context, so we're not going to talk about that because I think it's effective. I think just two images would be more effective. Which two images? These two, maybe? So big, maybe one's in the foreground here and it's big and it's in focus, and another one is smaller in the background and out of focus. Don't put thank you, it's very kind, but not necessary. Look at this one. All right, okay, made simple. Uploading, uploading. First page, weird. Um, typically, I do like icons. I don't know if it works here because you're describing personalities. I like the color choice. It brings my attention to the middle. Is it possible to bold like the most important thing about what you're describing about them? I don't want to have to redefine it. I don't have to. Google opportunities. It's not people, it's proactive users need something in between. One second, please. All right, back. So changing who, I need to get back on this. The proactive company, ugh. I don't want to say consumer, the proactive auto owner needs something between these two, so it's an assumption. And you see, I got in this break line split. It's kind of a style you've established. Do that again, because you went to arrows, and I think the first one's more suggestive and effective. Upkeep, all right, so what's cool about this is this already exists, right? We know this, I don't know what it's called, the dongle, the car USB already exists. So what are you really delivering? This is part of it, but really it's an app system, so I need to see the connectedness, the web page, the app, something, showing that it's not just this USB. OBD port. That's what it's really about, right? This helps, but without this, it's nothing. Um, six powerful features, zero wasted time, that's good. You're gonna have to flesh out the, the app system a bit more. I want you to cheat when it comes to explaining the app. Bad apps are awful. This needs to feel like it fits in the actual phone. I wonder if Big Nerd. Yep, I want to see if they have any systems you could just like. Yes, you could take a class. I don't think you're taking classes. What I want you to do resources. Do they have anything on developing?
basically I want you to find oh my gosh it's a lot let's hit my favorite person Curses. No. I guess another route is find a app that looks like it belongs in the iOS. This could fit on any phone, which is actually really problematic because you basically have two operating systems. Either it fits on Android, it looks like it fits on Android, or it fits on. Apple iOS. So, which is it? So that's my suggestion on change. These need to be expounded. So, like I was telling you in class, if I don't understand this, and a lot of people aren't going to understand this because if they're in the car, you just take it in. If you get an air dialog, what did it look like, and what does it look like now? And you're going to have to add more time into this because you have to visualize. All right, so you click on tire health. What's the next page look like? Yes, it gives you this information. Can't really give me tire pressure. Like if tire pressure isn't connected to the, to the, the, the battery. Or sorry, it's not connected to the engine. Let's go somewhere else. Diagnosis problem. Because really, that's where the biggest, like what's the mystery that I can't unpack? It's typically with the engine. Is it a emission sensor? I don't know. You don't even have to tell me this. Okay, questionable, bad, but like what are the ramifications of this? If I see this, this doesn't make sense. Nothing's wrong. This is like fix soon, tell me what it is, and come and give me an explanation of like what's the severity, what's my percentage of risk. Same thing with here, except it's just it's more urgency. 99% chance you're not getting to work tomorrow. Oh, that's urgent. Just by showing this yellow or red thing in my car doesn't tell me anything. So drive home some of its real meaning. And don't put thank you. It's very kind, but like just put this in context. Show some marketing approach to it. Like I said this last time, I'm not sure, so I'll say it again. We don't need this at the beginning. Let's, I feel like I said this last time too. I'm starting to feel like you didn't watch the other video. I'd like design criteria to be filled in this color of gray and then get rid of the border because really it just gives me like accessory information. It's not that important. I don't know what we're doing. Touch the floor, good protect, space savings, bearing quality. I don't know what we're doing yet. Brief. You give me some information on a brief. I can't read Chinese, so I can't help you. Like, should I just kick this over to Hefe? This is a mood board, and this is not a mood board. What? I don't know what this is. This is where you have to explain what the problem is, what were you tasked with doing. Inspiration. Inspiration is... Fine, but... I need to know what you were tasked with doing, and it can be different. Design criteria, touch the floor. This is making sense. Like every coat rack you do has a touch the floor. Good protect. What are we protecting? The clothes or the flooring? Space saving. All right, so it's got to be skinny. Bearing quality. I don't know what that means. Sketches, get rid of this thing in the background. 
get rid of this information. For me, I don't understand your progress. I need to know how are these inspirational? And then how did you take what you learned here and implement into your sketching, trying to understand and develop the problem better? The sketches need to feel like they're the same because these are scratchy and these are rather bold, two line weight drawings. I don't even understand how we got to this point. Lockout models, Photoshop that background, Photoshop that background. Tell me what you learned from small scale model, which is these four. And then when I understand what you got from your small scale model, you make a big one and tell me what you learned from the big one. You can give me one big image and I'd rather like it be Photoshop so it's just an image with a drop shadow and then you can give me a sequence of use. But right now it's just a lot, it's too many images and not enough structure. Because I think what's cool about this is you can activate more space as needed. I'd also like to see this living in an environment where it's supposed to, so somebody's house or a restaurant or I don't know what it's called right now. The thing you walk into a hotel, hotel lobby, there we go. Version two already done. Let's see what changes you made and I'll talk about yours next time. Something happened here. Alright, so now our water, I see where water is, but where does it get warmed? And then how does it get to the other place? And then honestly, maybe you have a cup here, that way I understand one, two, three, four, out. So honestly from this, I learned that you can model and you can render real good. Is there anything else I need to know about you from this project? Okay, that I believe is everyone. Good job.